Are you ready, Janet? Oh, there we go. Well, hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to our uh, Globe NOAA Be Wet webinar tonight. Um, I'm Kevin Sykowski from the University of Toledo. I'm a professor there in geography and planning, and um, we're going to look at water quality tonight. So I wanted to start out, I'll share my screen. See if I can do that. Hey, look at that. This is our second webinar. The first one was basically how to take observations. Oh, I have a blank screen right now. Huh. Okay, we see something. Do you see the first slide? What did we, we find in our water? Yeah. All right, my computer's spinning. I'm doing my webinar, so. Oh, all right, so my, my PowerPoint just crashed on me. This is the way things work, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so we're rebooting PowerPoint. Let's see what happens. Stop sharing. Sorry about that, everybody. One day I'll get a new computer <laughs> and that will probably, may, well, I'll see, it'll solve a few things for a short period of time. And then uh, after that won't. All right, let's try again. Share my screen. All right, well, you can see probably my PowerPoint right now, right? Right, we see the first slide. All right, but if I do slideshow, am I gonna kill everything? Ah, that might work. Does that look good? Yes. All right. Well, welcome. Okay. So, um, and we have Sarah tonight. It's going to talk. Uh, she's from Timacog, and then Laura and Rob Smith from uh, the Technology Nature Whatever Science Center. <laughs> so, I'm sure uh, Laura and Rob, you can introduce yourselves better than I can. Um, now, this is part of Globe Mission Earth. Globe Mission Earth is a NASA-funded project. It's across the United States. Uh, we have partners at your, uh, Boston University, West Ed, Tennessee State, UC Berkeley, and NASA Langley, uh, while in partners, other partners. But our funding tonight is provided by NOAA BWET. Uh, NOAA has um, these Bay Watershed Education and Training pro projects, and this is a Great Lakes specific one. And we do have funding for another year, so we'll keep going on this. Um, what I wanted to do is, though, uh, advertise a little bit the different places your students could present their, their research. And that's one of the things we want them to do is to do research. And these observations that we'll talk about tonight are part of research projects. The International Virtual Science Symposia for GLOBE projects are due March 10th, my wife's birthday, so it's a good day to remember. Um, and then in Ohio, Defiance College is going to have a symposium on March 17th for the Defiance area schools uh, for students to go there. But there's lots of opportunities here. No, Mason. I'm doing the webinar. I'm doing the webinar. Okay. On water. So everybody can mute, please. That'd be great. So May 6th is at the University of Toledo, and that's during the day. We get pictures of their students presenting. And then I guess I um, have these out of order time-wise, but University of Wisconsin is the Midwest uh, Student Research Symposia, Symposium May 1st through 3rd, and we'll have a bus going from Detroit and Toledo areas over to Wisconsin. Then lastly, the annual meeting in Globe is in July, but you have to be one of the winners of one of these other opportunities in order to get invited to go. So uh, just taking a look at some of the data uh, from this fall. This is all the hydrology data from the GLOBE website. And you can see there's kind of concentrations across uh, the world. We have the United States, uh, actually Colombia in South America, uh, and then Europe, uh, especially Croatia. They really like to take GLOBE observations. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Oman in the Middle East, uh, Japan, which is very interesting. And then Africa, um, 
there, there weren't aren't a lot of observations in Africa, but Africa was doing a large lake water um, campaign that we were connected to. And this just shows uh, the number of observations. Okay, so then our area, our BWET study area observations, we have um, University of Toledo and Defiance College observations here in Ohio. The River Rouge, uh, David Bilowski, part of that. Um, that's a BWET project up there. And then in uh, Western New York and Mike, thanks for uh, working with all these schools. Um, that's a BWET project over in Western New York. Uh, interestingly, there's a, a cluster of water quality observations near Reading, Pennsylvania. So my guess is we're gonna see at uh, like the IVSS, uh, some projects on water quality from that area. All right, just zooming in on our, our uh, area, the schools we've been working with in particular. Um, so here's a list of them. And so I did want to uh, give a shout out to all the teachers. So we got Joe, Tracy, Jeff, Marion and Abby at uh, Mill Creek West Unity Schools. Laura, who's on, uh, John, uh, Janie, and myself from the University of Toledo, and then Debbie, who's on the webinar as well. So thank you all, all of you who took observations in our area. So, okay, this is what I was doing, which, which took me so, so long, and I, I got on the uh, call a little late here. So this is transparency tubes. So we're looking, you know, these are all the observations for the fall. And what I had to do to get this, I had to use the ADAT system in Globe, download the CSV file, basically an Excel file, a common blended Excel file, and then bring it into ArcGIS online because you can't, in um, the visualization system in Globe, you can't see all the observations. It picks like one week at a time. I want to, excuse me, look at the whole fall. And you can see transparency too. This is in centimeters. The bigger the dot, the clearer the water is. The smaller the dot, the more turbid the water is, which is interesting. Our schools here near Defiance, actually the transparency wasn't that bad. Uh, we, we actually were expecting uh, very turbid uh, water out here. Uh, there is one observation that's pretty turbid, but our more turbid water is near um, Toledo here. I think uh, this is probably Clay High School and then Waite High School have pretty turbid water that they observed. And then this observation here in Monroe is one I made. Um, so anyway, that's a, a bit of a surprise that the uh, water bodies near the farm fields were not as turbid as the water bodies closer to Toledo. Um, and then, oh, I think this got cut off. Oh, well. Uh, so here's some observations using the uh, um, visualization system. And I think this is from, uh oh, I forgot whose school. Uh, basically, the ball field uh, was uh, more clear water than Beaver Creek. So just to give you an idea of what that's like. But you can see here, Clay High School again had the most turbid water. The lighter colors are more turbid. Now I looked at uh, dissolved oxygen. The bigger the dot, the more the dissolved oxygen. And again, um, over here by Toledo had the lower dissolved oxygen out near the farm fields actually was higher, which is interesting. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show as far as the data goes. And a uh, you know, big shout out to everybody that got their data uh, submitted. If you haven't submitted your data yet um, and you're having trouble, let me know. These are our contacts and information, by the way. And I'll stop sharing. And then I will. Um, Did you want to um, look at the chat? I am looking at it, yeah. Mm, perhaps Globe should support other methods to measure transparency and turbidity. Well, it has a fast and cheaper method, so Anna says. And Connie uh, responds with the, you know, the turbidity tube doesn't use any chemicals. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what other turbidity and transparency we could use, but um, the, the tube you can make out of like, like a clear plastic tube and you put water in it. And you just have to have the black and white checkered pattern at the bottom and then look down through it. 
So it's fairly um, easy to make, I suppose, if you don't want to buy one. All right, so what I'll do is I'll turn it over to Sarah. So Sarah, are you ready? You have to unmute and all that good stuff. I don't see Sarah unmuting yet. Okay, here I am. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello. It took me a second. Hello. Okay. Hey, now I see you too. That's great. Yeah. All right, well, I'll All turn right. it over to you to talk about the student watershed watch, I believe is what you're going to talk about. Is yes. Right? Okay. Yeah, right, I'm going to talk about student watershed watch and hopefully have a nice transition to Laura and Rob. Um, so first of all, thanks everybody for um, tuning in and I'm excited to to share some of what I've been doing with all of you. Um, I am a water quality planner with TEMACOG, so that's Toledo Metropolitan Area Council of Governments. Um, I work mostly with local governments um, and some other regional organizations, um, lots of, lots of policy and, and politics involved in my work. And then I get to do really awesome stuff like Student Watershed Watch. So, um, and I actually was, um, I was actually able to um, work with Student Watershed Watch before I even started at TEMACOG. So that's kind of a, a fun thing. I worked as a volunteer and then I got to start doing this for a living. So, all right, so I will, share my screen, hopefully that works, and we will get going. Whoops. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, I can see you. <laughs> okay, good. There we go. Okay. So I'll give a little bit of an overview of what Student Watershed Watch is, and then I'll talk about um, some of what the students um, found in 2019 and um, what will come next. All right, so the Student Watershed Watch, if you're not familiar with it, um, is a, a program that supplies water quality testing supplies to students in grades 5 through 12. So we have quite a, a large age range. Um, I'm sure the teachers that are that are on um, know what, what a difference there can be in that, that age group from about 10 to 18. So we really try to um, have supplies, uh, testing kits that are, are usable by a number of different ages. Um, and then we offer a lot of different options for what um, Teachers can test with their students and don't require any of them. So you can get started with just a couple. You can do all of them. You can take it as far as you want. So it's a really, it's easy to customize, which I, I think is nice. Um, this has been a program of Team ACOG since 1989. So last year we had our 30th year. It was super fun to be a part of that. Um, it was only my third year, so I can't take credit for the program, but um, I've had a lot of fun working with it and a lot of fun thinking about what the next 30 years could bring. Um, originally when it started, it was just focused on the mommy area of concern and then we have expanded out since then um, to other areas and I'll, I'll show that in a minute. Uh, fun fact, since 1989, over 20,000 students have participated. So. We had to go back last year as part of the 30th and um, look through all of that old data and sign up sheets and stuff and that was that was pretty cool. Uh, the Student Watershed Watch is totally supported by community sponsors. So we have a huge amount of sponsorship and support from the community, from local businesses and organizations. Um, the city of Toledo and Lucas County are, are also big supporters. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to see the support. And then we have um, support from others in the community, like um, at UT, we always have 
some volunteers for our student summit. Um, and they'll come and judge and it's fun. Um, so we provide uh, testing supplies, like I said. Uh, in the summer, usually we'll do a teacher training. So leading up to the program, which um, starts in October, we usually have a teacher training where you can come and use the test kits and figure out how the program works and ask any questions. Uh, we also try to get volunteers. So we will try to um, organize as many people as we can to come out and help. Um, usually the first year is, is kind of a lot um, to introduce this as part of your curriculum, so that is definitely available. And then we can also have classroom support. So if you need a speaker on a certain water quality topic or really any topic that um, Team ACOG or its partners may be able to cover, uh, we can work on that too. Okay, and so I said that we expanded out um, from the mommy area of concern, which I should have put on this map. Um, can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay, so the mommy area of concern is around here, somewhere like that. Um, so we've definitely gotten some sample sites outside of that. This year, uh, just over 860 students sampled from 22 schools. We had 25 teachers officially signed up to help with that, but I know that there were a lot more. Um, that's another great thing as far as community support is teachers working with each other. So um, we had 21 different sample sites for those 22 schools. And we actually this year, um, in addition to just in the, in the past, we've had just spreadsheets of data that teachers will submit and then we can certainly provide those. But this year we actually um, got everything up since 2010 on ArcGIS Online. So that will be launching on the website and then you can pull up a map like this and then click on each sampling site and get the, the data. So that's exciting. Okay, so um, after the sampling, which uh, takes place in October, we usually have about a month, month and a half um, before the student summit, and that's like a one day mini conference um, where students come and present their data. Uh, we have a poster session, and then we also have speakers um, come and talk from environmental fields to, to give students an idea of the opportunities that are available. Uh, so it's a great day and the students uh, present their, their results. Um, like I said earlier, we give this list of options, so these parameters that can be tested. Um, there are a few more than this, but this is basically the core list um, that most teachers will um, sample for. Um, and then we don't require any of them. So however many they have, if the students take the time and work with the data and um, get some results and something to talk about, then they're welcome to come and present. Um, so, I should have said at the beginning too, if anyone wants to jump in or ask any questions, feel free to just stop me. Okay, so, and this is, Little thumbnails are blocking me here. Um, so the sampling results uh, presented at the summit, uh, the poor to mid ranges, so for most of the classrooms and 10 of the 22 actually um, presented, um, the, the parameters that were most likely to have low water quality scores um, were turbidity, um, coliform and E. coli bacteria, and then aquatic macroinvertebrate communities. So these were the, the three that most of the classes said had low, um, low scores in their area. Um, temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, nitrate, and phosphate were all usually good to excellent. There were a couple of higher, um, higher measures, one for nitrate and one for phosphate. Um, those were both 
at rural um, locations, but um, those were just single measurements. So not too much to talk about with those. Um, and then the students will talk about what this means and what can be done to improve on their water quality. Okay, and then for my transition and kind of a wrap up, um, I was able to, through Student Watershed Watch, work with um, GLOBE and continue working with Laura Kubiak, um, who I've worked with for a few years, and I got to meet and work with Rob Smith. Um, so we actually went for the Arctic and Earth signs, which is STEM integrating GLOBE and NASA, um, program. So we got to go for a week to Fairbanks, Alaska, and has some fun pictures here. Up in the top corner there, we're in a permafrost tunnel. Um, the bottom right corner is our, our super fun uh, climate change board where we made all sorts of connections um, with different aspects of climate change and really helped to, to bring that home and, and I think will help to incorporate that with our work with students. Um, and then on the left, um, that is one of the Alaskan elders. So every day we were able to hear from an Alaskan native who talked about how climate change affected them and it helped to uh, think about making those connections back home and working with your community because that's a very important part um, of tackling any issue. Um, and especially one that has so many different implications. So that was an, an amazing experience and great to be able to work with Laura and Ron. Um, so part of that is a stewardship component that Laura and Rob will talk more about. Um, but I, I'm really excited for, for what this will add to Student Watershed Watch and I'm excited to keep working with um, the teachers that I work with. And if anyone um, is interested in Student Watershed Watch, if you've heard of it or if you haven't, uh, you can feel free to contact me. And that is all I have, unless anyone had questions. Well, thanks, Sarah. Um, and of course, I didn't like set it up how, you know, what we do at the GLOBE program and the Student Watershed Watch really complement each other. And that's yes. why you're on this uh, webinar. Um, many of the teachers who are in Student Watershed Watch have now become GLOBE teachers and some GLOBE teachers have become Student Watershed Watch teachers. What the Student Watershed Watch, it gives the students an opportunity to present in the fall. And they also have a creative component to the presentations a lot of times. And I think Laura is gonna show that. And then in the spring, the students can present um, their research paper as a poster, uh, you know, sort of like a, a research conference. And it's, you know, it's a little different venue, but it's another opportunity for the students to present their, their work. Yes, and I, I meant to say that too. I meant to make more of that connection, so thank you. All right, well, um, I see there's a question about ArcGIS Online, so I'll uh, answer that for Melody, and we'll turn it over to Laura now, and Laura's gonna talk about her students and what she does. Aha, and Rob too. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Kubiak. I'm Rob Smith. Hi, and... <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Good job. You did a great job. <laughs> All right. Can you see our screen? Yes. Wonderful. And hopefully, everybody will be able to hear the audio. Like Kevin said, we wanted to share some of our presentation. So, okay. Rob, who are we? <laughs> Well, we're, I'm Rob and this is Laura and we both teach at the uh, Aerospace and Natural Science Academy here in Toledo. Um, we're a dual programmed uh, 
high school. We have kids that do aviation out at the airport. And then we have our largest group of kids do the natural science program over here at Elmer Drive by the Botanical Gardens at the Natural Science Center. So Sarah already mentioned how Rob and Sarah and I went to Alaska as a team. And that was really exciting because GLOBE has the potential to provide teachers with so many wonderful professional development opportunities literally all over the world. So um, here's just a, a few quick shots of us. Um, we're actually collecting cloud data from the GLOBE Observer app. Um, what mountain we were, were we on the top of, Rob? In Denali National Park? <laughs> oh, I don't remember that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we were on top of a mountain collecting cloud data just for fun after the training was over. And what are you fishing for there, Rob? Arctic grayling. <laughs> so it was pretty cool to take what we learned in Alaska to bring it back to Toledo, where we are TPS proud. We work for Toledo Public Schools. And we have been taking what we learned in Alaska to better understand our local environment. So giving us going from a global perspective to what's in our very own backyard. And as GLOBE teaches us, we monitor the environment to better understand it. Um, so currently, I know we're specifically talking about the GLOBE hydrology protocols, um, but just an overview, our school, every student has a research project and um, we currently have GLOBE projects in the pedosphere, the hydrosphere, and atmosphere. So um, you can see these girls are literally hugging a Cala too because they're so excited to have borrowed it from NASA and also one from Dr. C. And then we have some students on the left studying soil um, along agricultural ditches. Um, but then um, to hone into the hydrosphere, Student Watershed Watch, which Sarah was talking about, was really like an attention getter for our students. So in October, some students who had never before collected GLOBE data literally just dove right into the creek behind our school. And they were all of a sudden pretty excited about better understanding the world around them through GLOBE hydrology protocols. And then through Student Watershed Watch and the staff at our school, we worked together as a team to write the script that we would share at the Student Watershed Watch. And um, like I said, we are career tech programs and our students spend um, a few hours a day in our career tech labs and our science teachers and our English teachers were also helping the students put together their script. So obviously the English class was the writing aspect and our science teacher and her student teacher were visiting our classrooms um, in the career tech labs to put it all together. So um, you can also see that my dog was even in the classroom. So that's just kind of the school we are. It's pretty cool. So we got to the Student Watershed Watch at the Toledo Zoo's Aquarium, as you can see in this photo. And although the kids are kind of covering it, um, you can kind of see in the background that they're in front of a Jeopardy board. So we thought about, okay, we have all of this hydrology data. What's a way that we can share it in a fun and creative way? Um, so the, the kids had the idea to present it through a game show and they took all of their data and created like a question and answer thing in Jeopardy. Um, they were super, super nervous for it, but they did a, a really good job and definitely bonded as a team. And something that was unique about this team of students is it was cross-age learning. So we had 10th, 11th, and 12th graders all working together to write this script. So it took a lot of logistical planning to figure out how to do that with so many teachers because we're pulling kids from different classes but it worked out and they did a great job and hopefully the audio comes through in this we have a student who 
said that he likes to sing at church and it was actually his idea to end the Jeopardy game with an ode to Lake Erie. And he completely wrote the lyrics and the tune to this. Um, and we had actually shared with Sarah that this is a student who had some failing grades and attendance problems as well. And he was almost not able to go on the field trip because of that. And he knew that. And when he found that out, he actually turned his grades around and pulled them up to satisfactory enough to be able to go to the student watershed watch. So the fact that we're motivating the students through GLOBE, through student watershed watch is, is pretty rewarding. So you can follow along to the lyrics and, and hopefully this video is something that you will be able to hear. All right, <laughs> let's start with, bear with me. Water is good and water is great. Try not to pollute, drink sports in the lake. Water is good and water is great. Trash in a drain is a mistake. Water is good and water is great. Our drinking water comes from every the lake. Okay, were you guys able to hear that? <laughs> yes, we were, very nice. Okay, <laughs> good, good. So then uh, after the event, um, actually it was frankly just this past week when I was putting, when Rob and I were putting this together, I asked the student what it meant to him to be able to present and what he said, how this opportunity impacted him. Sarah, I hadn't shared this with you before, so here we go. What Globe and Student Watershed Watch did for me, talking in front of people and singing was a very different and nervous experience for me. It gave me the ability to speak out in front of crowds. It also let me see a side of myself that I never thought I would be able to do. I am also just ready and will do even better next time. And that's from our student, Juwan. So again, like I said, GLOBE really has the ability to make a, a very deep impact on our students. And, and thanks to our partnerships like Team McCog and Student Watershed Watch, we're able to do that in a very creative and unique way for our students. So a little bit more about the hydrology projects at our school. Um, like I said, attention get our through Student Watershed Watch. The kids noticed that there was trash in our waterways and it got them thinking about our local drinking water. And so here's a few of the examples of hydrology research projects that our students are working on. They're curious about the impact that invasives have on local waterways. They're, they're wanting to understand the opinions that people have on Toledo's drinking water and if it's safe or not. Um, you can see a picture on the right there. The girls are measuring turbidity and thinking about how precipitation plays a role in both turbidity and as you can see the trash that they collected, particularly with plastics. And finally, how precipitation measures on um, nutrients like nitrates and phosphates. So our school's pretty awesome. It's really project-based learning. As a career tech teacher, I can't, I can't do it by myself. It, it doesn't mean as much. So it's a very team-based approach. And our, our math teachers help the students analyze the statistics of the numbers and, and how the statistics tell a story. Our language arts teachers are helping the students figure out what credible sources are and researching um, the bigger topics that they're interested in. Of course, our science teachers help us understand the why behind it. Our social studies teachers, uh, this is the first time I've really been using an economics approach. Our econ teacher is really excited to get the kids thinking about what really makes the money <laughs> and the cost analysis. And our psychology teacher is 
helping the students write surveys. And, and then again, uh, first time for me really working with our health teacher to think about um, the impacts that pollution has on human health. And something that we've discovered outside of our coworkers' content areas, a lot of them really have their own personal interests and passions to share. So this here is an example. Um, Jenny Kuzno is our, one of our wonderful English teachers. She has a pond in her backyard and she's doing, Rob, do you wanna to speak to the fish that she's studying? Well, she's been, over the years, she's been doing a length and weight analysis of her fish population, culling the fish population. Um, but the, the great thing is, is she's now having Laura and students out there and, you know, the students are getting to see, you know, basically population dynamics and the bass and bluegill of her pond. Yeah, and then the student on the right is actually using the Globe Observer app and making observations at this teacher's house as part of his research project. So this teacher's pond, personal pond, has become a, a Globe official site. <laughs> so and what we're really, you know, what this all really is coming down to and meaning for the students is they're seeing impacts of our waterways they're seeing the impacts we're having on our waterways and the hydrosphere so we as a component of what we want to do as a school which is stewardship and taking action and also a component of our trip to alaska um our students are going to be working with the uh our local area around the school and they're actually going to, this is a picture of what Lucas County currently uses as a door hanger for drain awareness and the uh, storm drains in the neighborhoods. And our, we're gonna have students actually redesign and kind of turn it almost into a little competition. Door hangers. And then we're going to take it a step further along with doing door hangers. We're also going to have the students designed some sort of a storm drain tag. This is one, I think it was Cuyahoga County over in the Cleveland area um, came up with this one. Uh, it's simple, but you know, it gets people thinking before they dump or drop something in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that water really is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's, and you know, with stewardship, it, we're gonna get the kids to take a problem and actually be able to present it to the community around us. And that's all we got. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. We got questions? <laughs> well, thanks, Laura and Rob. Very nice. Making a difference in students' lives. <laughs> Uh, one thing I should mention, <clears throat> the NOAA BWET program really does want students to do a, um, a service project like you're talking about. You know, how, how can they change their community? Uh, and that's something I'm, I'm new, you know, I don't, haven't done much or seen much of. So do we have questions for Laura, Rob, or Sarah? Everybody's very quiet tonight. I'm the only person that's live. Oh, okay, Laura and Rob are back. <laughs> I see it's funny. Everybody's asleep. Oh, Sarah's back. <laughs> Mike, hey. <laughs> well, the one thing I will say about the storm drain tagging and what really brought it to like, I, I lived for a number of years down in the Cincinnati area and you know, everything down there drains the Ohio River. Every one of our soil water conservation districts has this down there had some sort of a storm drain tagging. And every storm drain in any county I ever worked in, and I worked down there as a fisheries biologist, was literally marked. And then coming up here, I was like, I don't even know if the, some of the people in these neighborhoods in you know Sylvania realize that that storm drain is a direct route to Lake Erie, you know, and we have 
our, our concerns and where our pollution is coming from. But at the same time, I think, like you said, we need to get community awareness. And I, this is a good way for the students to see that, you know, they could actually make a difference. We're not going to go out to Henry County and sit down with the farmers, but they can do something here locally. Right. All right, so there's a question um, in the chat for Lauren Rob. Did any students come to you with Globe or Student Watershed Watch experience? So these are students in Toledo Public Schools that might have done st Student Watershed Watch or Globe in middle school, and then again did it with you. Um, I'm deferring to you, Laura. I'm, I'm not sure that I totally understand the question well, I any of them in seventh or eighth grade do it or oh I'm trying did, to think. did any of the students come to oh if they had previous globe yeah. experience oh okay um that's a that's a good question so I think <laughs> Olivia <laughs> had globe experience so one one student to the best of my knowledge Elizabeth came to us with previous globe and student watershed watch experience only one um and the i will say the one student that came to us with previous globe experience from it was actually harvard elementary of tps she is like our star student <laughs> she had the internship at nasa she is submitting to every possible science symposium she can get into she mentors other students through their research projects. She is such a go-getter and an initiator. So I can say with great confidence that um, I think it's a, and I know Melody's on this call and any other teachers that are junior high teachers, for us as high school teachers to get students that had experienced GLOBE as a junior high student, I think it makes a, a huge difference. I've only had a couple that have, and I wish that they all had had that experience. Yeah, and that's one of the goals of our project Globe Mission Earth is to have teachers at different grade levels and hopefully students experience uh, these activities at different grade levels. Um, and like I said, we're, we're going to be moving into a, a phase where we're spreading our Globe Mission Earth to other partnerships uh, in the United States. All right, any other questions? Oh, and it, it does strike me uh, now, you know, uh, speaking to just specific people here, but that, you know, Melody, it may be worthwhile for Laura to advertise with your students. I don't know if Laura, that's something your school does, but, um, you know, you have Melody, you have, uh, Cindy Medansky and um, Jamie Youssef. And there's different teachers around Toledo who at the uh, K-8 level are working with students doing things that they would uh, come maybe be attracted to your program. Uh, you're muted right now, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, Dr. C, you are correct. And we should do more of that for our... <laughs> Melody, send us your kids. <laughs> oh. okay. All right. Well, if there aren't any other uh, questions, uh, thanks. I'll thank the speakers tonight, Sarah, Lauren, Rob. It was great. It was great hearing. And, and uh, our yeah. next uh, webinar is March 3rd. You put that on your uh, calendar if you want. We're going to start um, talking more about projects. Uh, of course, projects are going to start being due for students about that time. And we could talk about more specifics on projects at that time. All right, everybody, have a good night. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.